For those who are joining us online, thank you for inviting us into your living room. I hope that you can join us in the sanctuary sometime soon. I am Reverend Barbara Hess. I am joined today by Karen Ducharme, who is our director of music. Jay, Patrick J uh, is our liturgist. Linda Pierce is our director of faith formation. And I have a thought for a sermon, not today's sermon, but sometime soon. I did not ask permission, but there is somebody in the sanctuary who sews beautifully, and I asked them if they could take this stole, which had been ruined, and take it apart and make something new out of it. And they returned today having taken it to the cleaners, and the cleaners were able to take 
the stain that was right there out of it and the stains from where I, I handled it. And it was made do. So there's a sermon in there somewhere. Yeah. And, and you're going to hear it sometime soon, but it, it isn't formulated just yet. But thank you, thank you, thank you to the person who gave me back my stole. Welcome. Please join me in this morning's call to worship. What great joy we have. Our Lord is risen. Believe with your whole heart in the miracle of resurrection. We open our hearts to the news of God's faithfulness to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Let the stone of ignorance, stubbornness, and fear be rolled away from your heart. Celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Know that his love is poured out for you, for your healing. Be at peace and rejoice. Amen. This morning's response to Psalter is Psalm 133. How very good and pleasant it is when we all live together in unity. It is like precious oil on the head running down upon the beard. It is like young children sitting side by side with seniors in worship. It is like corporate executives picking in the fields next to farmhands. It is like Jews, Christians, and Muslims living in peace in Jerusalem. How very good and pleasant it is when we all live together in unity. Praise, Praise the Lord. Praise those servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Above the heavens. He raises the poor from the dust and lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with princes, with the princes of his people. Praise the Lord. Our first reading is from Acts chapter 4, 31 through 35. The believers of the new church were one, of one heart and one mind, determined to live together as followers of Christ. Each person was provided for as those with more than enough shared out of their abundance with those who had little or nothing. I'm reading this morning from the Common English Bible. After they prayed, the place where they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking God's word with confidence. The community of believers was one in heart and mind. None of them would say, this is mine, about any of their possessions, but held everything in common. The apostles continued to bear powerful witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and an abundance of grace was at work among them all. There were no needy persons among them. Those who owned properties or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds from the sales, and place them in the care and under the authority of the apostles. Then it was distributed to anyone who was in need. Our second reading is from 1 John, is chapter 1, verse 1 through 2. two. This passage from 1 John expresses what it's like to be a follower of Jesus. God is the light, and those who follow the way of Jesus walk in the light. Those who choose their own way, instead of doing as Jesus would do, don't walk in the light, but rather, they walk in the darkness. We announce to you what existed from the beginning, what we have heard, what we have seen with our eyes, what we have seen in our hands handled about the word of life. The life was revealed and we have seen and we testify and announce to you the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. What we have seen and heard, we also announce it to you so that you can have fellowship with us. Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. We are writing these things so that our joy can be complete. This is a message that we have heard from him and announced to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. If we claim we have fellowship with him and live in the darkness, we are lying and do not act truthfully. But if we live in the light in the same way he is in the light, we have fellowship with each other, and the blood of Jesus, his Son, cleanses us from every sin. 
If we claim we don't have any sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from everything we've done wrong. If we claim we have never sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. My little children, I am writing these things to you so that you do not sin. But if you do sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is God's way of dealing with our sins, not only ours, but the sins of the whole world. Thank you, Patrick. The Gospel reading today is from the Gospel of John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. This passage is read after Easter. We tend to remember the part about doubting Thomas, but not the part where Jesus returns to his disciples, shares the Holy Spirit by breathing on them, and then instructs the disciples to go out and tell others. Hear now the words from the writer of the Gospel of John. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors were locked where the disciples were, for fear of the Jewish authorities, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails on his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen me and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may continue to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our God is still speaking. We need to keep listening. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing to your, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Many churches refer to the first Sunday after Easter as Low Sunday because it is often one of the lowest attended services of the year. I am so proud of you folks for being here. <laughs> That's why you'll often see seminarians or student ministers or associate ministers being offered the opportunity to preach the week after Easter. Some churches refer to the first Sunday after Easter as Holy Humor Sunday because Jesus overcoming death plays a joke on death. I looked up the jokes online and most of them weren't good. And even if they were good, there weren't enough of them to fill an entire sermon. But there was one cute joke and I thought it was extraordinarily cute. You have to remember that Joseph of Arimathea was the one who offered the tomb to bury Jesus. And his friends 
were asking why he would do donate the new family tomb to Jesus. And Joseph replied, he told me that he was only going to need it for the weekend. <laughs> that was cute. I, I like that one. There's another reason ministers try to avoid preaching on the Sunday after Easter, besides being exhausted. I think that it's because the Doubting Thomas story comes up every single year. I started in August of 2017, so this is the seventh time we've had a whack at, G, uh, at uh, Thomas. And it really doesn't seem fair to pick on poor Doubting Thomas. We should give him some slack. We've all done, had mistakes, uh, done things that we weren't proud of. I have, we all have. But I can't imagine anything that we've done that we would be satisfied having people refer to 2,000 years later. Let's say for argument's sake that Jesus, uh, excuse me, Thomas didn't believe the disciples. How is that any different from the description in the Gospel of Luke where the disciples didn't oh, the disciples didn't believe Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women when the women reported seeing the empty tomb? How is that different than those of us who question aspects of our own faith? Questioning isn't an absence of faith. It's a desire to fully understand all that can be understood so that our faith can be even stronger. Let's bring it back to this morning's scripture. Jesus first appeared to the disciples when Thomas wasn't there. Have you ever wondered where Thomas was? Why wasn't he with the other disciples on Resurrection Sunday? Because this is taking place 12 hours after Mary Magdalene found the empty tomb. And what, 48 hours, a little more than 48 hours after Jesus had been crucified. Where was he? There's a, no way of knowing. He certainly could have been off running errands. But I suspect, and I, I might be alone in this assumption, I suspect that after the crucifixion of Jesus, Thomas might have gone off alone to process what had just happened. When something tragic happens, some want to gather with others to share in a collective grief, and others pull back and wish to process their grief with all the extra, extraneous hoopla. Let's take a look at the disciples. We see that Jesus first appeared to the disciples about 12 hours after Mary had seen the resurrected Christ and had gone to tell those disciples. The 12 disciples had a reason to be hiding. Jesus had been crucified by the Roman authorities for challenging the Roman Empire. Remember, Pontius Pilate had put a sign on the cross above Jesus' head, which read, Jesus the Nazarene, King of the Jews. The sign was posted in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek. There could only be one king or emperor at a time, so someone labeled King of the Jews would be crucified. The first week Jesus found the disciples gathered together and scared out of their ever-loving minds. Their friend and faith leader had been arrested, crucified, and buried. When the disciples witnessed the appearance of Jesus, they were both startled and terrified. Jesus' greeting of peace be with you means far more than may trouble never find its way to you. It has a meaning that is closer to, may God give you every good thing. The ever-patient Jesus 
trying to calm his followers and then encourage them to go out and do the work for which he had prepared them. It's fine to gather with like-minded souls, but it's better to go forth and preach the gospel and do Christ's work in the world. Just as Jesus had come from God, Jesus was now sending the disciples out with his message of love. In his three short years of ministry, Jesus hadn't been able to touch every man, woman, and child. Jesus needed the disciples to pick up where Jesus had left off. The second time Jesus appeared to his disciples, it's eight days after the first visit. And the disciples were still hiding in the upper room. Now maybe it's because I spent 30 years in sales before I started seminary. But I could almost hear Jesus using a sales manager's voice saying, hey guys, why are you still hanging out at the office? Sales reps come into the office to submit paperwork and the office is a comfortable place to be. There are usually other sales reps and there's usually food. But customers don't come in looking for sales reps. Sales reps have to go out looking for customers. At least good sales reps do. Good sales reps don't sell a person something that they don't need. Good sales reps meet the person where they are both literally and figuratively, and then the good sales rep tries to match what the sales rep has to what the person needs. When I was speaking about Jesus earlier, I said that in the three short years of ministry, Jesus hadn't been able to make contact with every man, woman, and child. Jesus needed the disciples to go out and spread the message of God's love to the people who needed to hear it. In a similar fashion, there are people in our current sphere who need to hear that they are loved. Last week I spoke about how Deb Donaldson prays with other teachers before school starts. I hadn't asked her for permission before I talked about it. And then I did, and she said that uh, she has been the subject of many, 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 many sermons over the years since her husband is an ordained minister. So she's, she's used to it. Deb Donaldson prays with other teachers, uh, one of those being Chad Lay's sister, Sage. They pray before school. They don't speak to the children about God. They don't speak to the children about Jesus or the Holy Spirit or anything of a religious nature. But those teachers show the love of God, the love of Christ in everything they do with the students that day. It's a ministry that Deb and the other teachers have taken on. Now it's wonderful, wonderful that we have gathered here this morning and every Sunday morning. It's good for us to be energized for the week ahead. It's good, of, good for us to collaborate with like-minded souls. But we can't hear the word of God on Sunday and then do nothing with it for the rest of the week. We need to go out and be Jesus' hands and feet in the world. Jesus told the disciples to go out and spread the good news. This morning, I am urging you to do the same. Amen.
of joys and concerns, and uh, some of you have been asked to pray for Seth's cousin, Jasmine, and I ask everyone to pray for Seth's cousin now. Seth, Jasmine turned 16 in March and was hit by an 18-wheeler gravel truck who did not stop and ran over both of her legs. Her legs are shattered, her skull is broken, but not swollen, and there doesn't appear to be any brain trauma. Last night, her first meal, uh, she had her first meal through the tube, which was the first time she's had anything to eat other than medicine, and they are lowering the dosage of her pain meds. So I ask everyone to continue praying for Seth's cousin, Jasmine. What? Michael, what? I got a call from my brother Andy. He's out of rehab. Your brother Andy is out of rehab? That's good. Pray for your uh, brother Andy, and we are also praying for Aunt Kathy, uh, Beth's Aunt Candy, ah. <laughs> Beth's Aunt Kathy, uh, who had a terrible, terrible, terrible car accident, was in the hospital. They didn't expect her to live. Uh, went into rehab, and she just went home. So, uh, but we need to continue to pray for Aunt Kathy. And uh, let's see now, we have our prayer box, and that is just the list of prayers that we have in the bulletin. It's not a real prayer box, but any prayers that come in during the week, we try to put in the bulletin. So we have prayers for Andrew who continues to have issues with his legs and prayers for Margaret and Zyra and her family, Jeffrey, Gary, and Jonathan, as well as Richard's brother, Michael. Prayers for Sean O'Neill's mother, Linda, who will be having surgery later this month. Prayers for Angela. Continued prayers for Deb Donaldson. Prayers of gratitude that Kevin has a new place to live, Prayers of joy that Luke and Liam are both doing well. Prayers of healing for those who are homesick with the flu, COVID, or stomach bug. Prayers for the family of Ginny Baker, her nephew Bob and his wife and daughter were here for the service yesterday. Thank you to all who were here for the service and also who helped with the collation. I got a text from Bob last night that it was absolutely perfect. Prayers for those who are in pain and facing surgery. Prayers for Terry's friend Claudia, who is undergoing open heart surgery. Prayers for our church. And as I've said before, we're doing well, but we are still in need of God's prayers, God's blessings, God's healing love. We pray for Riley's friend Ellie, the people of Ukraine, the innocent people caught in the fighting of the Middle East, Sam Sam's son Jonathan, Judy's friend Anna, and Karen D's brother Steve. We will have a time of silence before our prayer. Let us be together in a spirit of prayer. Gracious God, thank you for this opportunity to be together. Thank you for the love that we feel, even when we doubt. Encourage us to help, encourage us to question 
but then believe. We now have names and situations we want to raise up to you this morning. God, we thank you for the snowbirds who were down south and have returned back to us up north. We pray for those who are traveling to see the solar eclipse tomorrow, that they may travel and come back to us safe. God, we thank you for our times when we question and we wonder just like Jesus was patient with the disciples, you are so patient with us. You want to help us believe. Please be with all of the names of people, the people and situations which we have raised up to you. And keep all of us safe now and throughout the week. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. online exactly where you found the uh, service this morning there is a link to donate and your link makes this ministry possible all that we have belongs to God as we celebrate our unity as a community of faith and focus our hearts on the risen Christ we joyfully lay our possessions out at the Lord's table through the grace of God and the bounty of this church, we have the ability to share our gifts so that all may have what they need to live. We thank God for the opportunity to truly be in fellowship with one another and with the world through the offerings today.
me in the offering dedication is found in the bulletin. Generous and surprising God, when we thought that death had claimed your only son, you amazed us with the resurrection. Surprise us again with your ability to turn these humble offerings into gifts that will transform our humble ministry, the Westfield area, and the world to our witness to your love. We lay our very lives at your feet, O oh God, knowing that you will use us to proclaim and embody the gospel. Amen. as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. By eating this bread and drinking this cup, we proclaim Christ's death, celebrate Christ's resurrection, and await Christ's coming again. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Now pick up the bread and the juice, your cup, your cup that you have, and hold it while I pray. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Bless this bread, bless this fruit of the vine. Bless all of us in our eating and drinking at this table, that our eyes may be open, that we may be recognize the risen Christ in our midst, in each other, and in all for whom Christ has died. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. This cup of blessing is the communion of the blood of Christ. The gift of God for the people of God, ministering to you, I give you this bread and this cup. Take and eat the wafer, for it symbolizes the body of Christ, broken for your salvation. Now please join me in the common commission as found in the bulletin. Let us go forth into the world in peace, being of good courage, holding fast to that which is good, rendering to no one evil for evil, strengthening the faint-hearted, supporting the weak, helping the afflicted, honoring all persons, loving and serving the Lord, and rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Now hear the benediction. Lord of mercy, be with us as we go from this place today. Fill our lives with your love. Help us to bring the good news of hope and peace wherever we go. Let us truly be people of the resurrection, the Easter people. Amen. <laughs> 